I stood on top of a plane, no parachute. <laughs> I could teach you, but you gotta sign an NDA. What's the craziest stunt you've done? I climbed the pyramids of Egypt and I went to jail for that. It's illegal, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got robbed one time and I was really done with that. Like they would just stare me down for hours when I'm like in the holding cell. The country of Finland doesn't really exist and it's just a big lake where the Japanese like to fish. guys welcome to another episode on the podcast we have today our new friend kinsey hi guys how are you thank you for having me on appreciate welcome. you coming out um want to give a little background on what an amazing person you are and all the fun stuff you do yeah definitely um so my name is kinsey i um am a creator i've been creating for almost six years but i have um seven million followers on all social media platforms so that's you um i was a professional stunt woman and then now i I guess I'm a stunt adventure creator on social media. So I've traveled to 65 countries, been all over doing the craziest things you can imagine. Incredible. That must be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. It's also very addicting. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Well, like you texted me last week. You're like, can we move it? I was like, yeah, sure. You're like, I got to go to London. I'm like, that's a long flight for a yeah, couple days. Yeah, I was literally there for three days. And it was like, and la yesterday on the flight, I was like, oh, this is so tough. Like an 11 hour flight for three days. But yeah, you do it. <laughs> Did you do anything fun? Um, I was just there for work, so nothing. And that usually it's like very fun. But London has had like my adventure travel, so I was just there for a big charity event and then a shoot on Saturday. I was like, I do a lot of hosting gigs as well. So gotcha. Where's the funnest place you've done adventures? Um, that's tough because it always changes every time. Every year I go to new places, and it always changes. okay as of now. As of now, um, well, I was just literally last week in Morea and I swam with humpback whales. Wow. wow. So that was amazing. And then I, um, in August, I was in Patagonia mm. and that was great. Like a lot of hiking, climbing. I'm very, I like mountains and nature and things like that. So that was incredible. But Iceland is really, really great. Actually, Austria. I did some amazing adventures in Austria. Yeah, I was there once. It's a pretty place. It's so been. pretty. Yeah. Awesome. And I had a really good like person who took me to all the crazy, like we did this um, crazy climb called the Ladder of Death. And mm -hmm. so it was great. Ladder of Death. Yeah. <laughs> it's what you would imagine by me saying that actually. <laughs> she said, you lost me, at, you lost me at ladder and then death. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I enjoy extreme sports. You know, you want to go 200 miles an hour, go race through Baja. Let's go. Yeah. Give me a motor, run it. Okay. That's all you got it. Um, I'm actually, I fly helicopters, I skydive, but for some reason, racing cars was never... Never on the list? No. That kind of scares me. I don't know why. And I'm like not scared of really anything, but racing cars, I think I'd be afraid. Yeah. I started flying airplanes and then had one bad experience and I'm like, yeah, I'll stick to the ground. You were over it. I was over it. I was, I turned like sheet white that day. I was like, I'm good. Yeah. It's that out of control feeling that, you know, when you're in the air, it's something goes wrong. You're kind of like, you know. Yeah. Not too many options anymore. I, I don't know. I'm more I, comfortable in a helicopter, I feel like, than like a small plane. That's you what think? I was in. Then like propeller planes. I mean, I know they, they, I know that they, they glide, but it's yeah. still, I feel like. But you can kind of get a helicopter to glide-ish. Yeah. A lot of people tell me that. They're like, well, I mean, if you lose the engine, you're going to die and all these things. And like, to be honest, in a helicopter, 98% of crashes are, are human error. It's not because of the machine. Yeah. So it's like, even when we're training to fly, I've done 500 auto rotations where we don't have an engine. So we know what to do. Like, I still will go with a, an instructor all like a couple months, a couple times or every other month to be like, hey, I'm gonna practice my auto rotations. So if I lose my engine, we can completely glide and control where we land. We're so much more in control than if you're in a fixed wing plane, yeah. because I can actually like control, like I'll, if I wanna make this spot, I could just get, turn and I can turn make to get spot. With, yeah. with an airplane, you kind of got to project that You've way. Got, yeah, you're just gonna land where you land, but obviously you have to, the scary thing with the helicopter is like wind, like wind and wires, like you can hit some wires, you can hit some, but like, those things and there's also just so much going on there's no autopilot in a helicopter that that gets more scary and if you don't fly often there's so much going on you have all three controls at all and there's so many things that a pilot could do wrong that it can be really dangerous if for more so like on your education level than on the machine of a helicopter right but if the engine fails i'd rather be in a helicopter than a plane yeah 
Is it true that most people that know how to fly helicopters don't switch to airplanes just because it's a little confusing? No, this actually, so the cool thing about flying helicopters is that I can go become an airline or an airplane pilot within 20 hours so fast. It's a oh, conversion it. program so fast because it's so much more difficult to fly a helicopter. So, but if you were an airplane pilot, you can't just come and fly a helicopter. You gotta start from you ground gotta zero. Start from ground zero. Well, so for me, I'm, I'm actually going to get my, um, fixed wing license soon and I'll just go to a camp for two weeks and I'll come back and fly an air and but a lot of the pilots who fly helicopters who fly planes after are like this is so boring I would never do this <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's very boring it's not a lot going on not a lot but I kind of want that like I don't fly enough for it to be extremely safe so I think I'd rather just like I want to get a little fixed wing plane and be able to bop around have my future kids we go camping on the weekends like go to cool little places like hey my friends you want to get in the plane and we go to san diego let's go surf this weekend like that versus a helicopter i can't do that yeah that that, that is cool i've have a experience with friends who have uh, parents that had planes or this and that and it does seem cool to have the freedom to just like do these little short trips around california frequently and yeah just go up Maybe just stop in and get something to eat somewhere. And yeah, like how fun and, you'd be like. It's it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Jump in, kids. Let's go camping in Yosemite for the weekend, and like you yeah. just pile in, or like it we'll would just, be so fun. Right. And when I had, when I got my, I finished my pilot's license when I lived in Puerto Rico. Uh, so I did half in LA and half in Puerto Rico. And it's so much different flying here than there because just we, there's so, our airspace here is so busy. Mm -hmm. And so the regulations and what you could do is just so strict. Yeah. So even if you live in Malibu and you have a helipad in Malibu, you can't just go land there. The neighbors will, you'll, will complain like- well, you Even have if you to, have a pad. Even if you have, you have to get it approved through seven steps and it's so difficult. So me as a pilot, it's just not really fun here versus when I was in Puerto Rico. It's like the island is only so big. So we could go across the island. You would drive three hours, but it takes me, you know, 45 minutes in the heli. We can go to the beach. I can land on the beach. I can land at a restaurant. If there's wow. like a field next to the restaurant, I don't care. Game me and my girls would land at the restaurant and we'll go grab food. And then it's like you could bop around everywhere and it's so fun. And it's less work because as a pilot, you need to be constantly monitoring your radios and tra changing airspaces. So if I flew here, to the beach, I could be changing my airspace like four times, which is so much. I have to know all my radio stations yeah. versus in Puerto Rico. Definitely. Got my one station. If I'm by the San Juan airport, if not, I'm doing my thing. I'm chilling. I have no one to talk to. If you're to. not even by the airport, you're not talking to anybody. Um, You would go to like a station that would cover the broad spectrum area and I would do position reports. I'd be like helicopter 893 Papa 500, you know, and just like report where you're at just in case anybody's listening. But yeah. Yeah, freedom. Yeah, a lot more freedom, which is a lot more fun. Yeah. So if I lived on an island again, I would love helicopters. But since I don't and I live in LA, I think I'm ready to do fixed wing. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Get into the adventure space. It seems like, a, you know, quite an undertaking and, and something that you have to be very adventurous and kind of want to go out here and, and uh, start making content like this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was kind of a journey. Like I never like saw that for me. Right. It wasn't like I woke up and was like, this is what I want to do. But um, I was always an athlete my whole life. Um, I was a gymnast, soccer player, everything. So once I started acting, it was like, there's so many blonde young women trying to act. Like you really have to stand out. Like, how are you going to get that job versus every other blonde girl in LA? And so they were like, you should get your stunt license that way. If a job comes up where you need to be a cheerleader, you need to fall down the stairs, you need to ride dirt bikes, like all things I know how to do, then you, they won't have to hire a stunt double. So they'll hire you for the acting position. So I'm very driven and all in person. And when I heard that, I was like, okay. And so that was my way to make it. And then I started doing it. And then I started to realize at that point, five, six years ago, like social media was just up and coming. And I was starting to put like me doing sports and me doing all these adventure stuff and it like doing really well on social media. And I was like, this is my way to stand out. And so now I only will do stunts on set if I'm like really paid well. And now I just do it, get to do it for myself. It's awesome. Yeah. What's the craziest stunt you've done? Um, it, it depends. Um, because I've been to jail a couple times, but out of <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! You can't say that. And then go to the next topic. I only out of the country, so I have no record uh, in okay. the country. So I'm not a felon, you guys. You're safe here. Um, it's a safe space. <laughs> yeah, but um, no. Well, I climbed the pyramids of Egypt in 
Um, yeah, climbing pyramids of Egypt, and I went to jail for that. That's illegal, right? Yeah. You got a lot of climb on them like that? No. Wait, you really can't really climb? Dangerous. You can't climb them. It's really dangerous. Like, they're super hot and tall. How big are the stones? So, like, up to here. So, oh. each one, I was like... It was like lugging. Like, yeah, get, a and, check, uh, like a press. You made it to the top, though? Yeah. And then you got arrested at the bottom? Uh, well, yeah, once I came down. <laughs> yeah, and then um, I stood on top of a plane, no parachute. Yeah. Well, that- no biggie. Yeah, no biggie. That one, that one was probably the scariest one because, like, once the wind hits you, and like you train for these things, so, um, something to hold on to. That you're on top of an airplane. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. You train, but you just, you know, it's the first time doing that. That's crazy. yeah. I had one. I was like riding a horse, and I had to grab the helicopter, like from the horse. Which that was a lot going on. Too. Yeah, a lot going on, which is pretty scary. The horse didn't get spooked. Uh, no, they're like really, okay. yeah, like train. that horses are really good. Yeah. Yeah, I'm out on a couple of those. <laughs> yeah. I'm crazy. But... One of my other uncles, my mom's brother, uh, Donnie, he uh, he got thrown off an aircraft carrier trying to hold down a helo when they was in the Navy. He got messed up good. Mm. They're high. Yeah. It's a long fall to the water, yeah. I don't want to get hurt anymore. So no. Now I'm like, I'm getting too old for this. Now I just like to do the adventure travel, like swimming with humpback whales or yeah. going on really crazy expeditions in like parts of the world that people don't normally see. I love to do that, but now like this crazy stuff, I'm like, no. It's good to build a following and then be able to transition to something that's a little more fun, but kick back, not compared to like, you know, standing on top of airplanes. And yeah, stuff. yeah. And yeah, you get older and I feel like your frontal lobe develops and you're just like, wait, <laughs> <Did> I... <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Why would I do that? How was the uh, Egyptian jail? How did they treat you after that? Were they pretty aggressive with, with you? Um. Yeah, it's really scary just because like, yeah, you're obviously like, a, like they were just like all staring at me more so than anything. Like they would just stare me down for hours when I'm like in the holding cell. But um, it was fine. I only stayed there overnight and then I just like paid the bail and was able to leave. So it wasn't bad. Yeah. Did you have to I'm, go to court I, or anything or just pay? And... No, I don't. Yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to go back to Egypt. I actually have no idea. Yeah. But... <laughs> Like it flagged at the, flagged at the Yeah, I don't know if you want to find out. Egypt's yeah. probably not the best place to be right now anyway. So Yeah. I didn't really, I, I didn't really love it anyway. No. How was the food? Uh, food was good. I actually really, um, I love Middle Eastern food and I love Middle Eastern culture, but it was just more so like the traffic's insane, a lot that. of haggling. Like I really like natural kind of like gorgeous beauty that's not so overpopulated and Egypt just felt so like, even when you're at the pyramids, like you're supposed to be taking in one of the most, you know, like everybody has on their bucket list to go to the pyramids. This is such a beautiful spot. And it was just like, you're getting, he's right behind you, right? You're getting haggled every second. It just like, it like, it just takes away from the moment. I feel like. Yeah. That doesn't make it fun. Yeah. What's Um, the most, uh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm more of a Bali vibe. Those people relaxing. I want to be out of the city. Yeah. Bali's great. And leave me alone. Yeah. I like mountain. That's how I am with mountains. I like to be just like in nature and like nobody's around and finding cool spots that aren't like so Instagrammable. And because then it's like, you'll get to those Instagram spots and everybody's waiting in line to take pictures. Yeah. And you're like, Kinda dang. Like, it's the, the, the purpose of the adventure, right? Yeah. So now I'm on a hunt to find like my next year of travels. Like we're, we're doing uh, like Kazakhstan and like crazy places that people like haven't really been that I can't wait to show the world how there's so much beauty there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Traveling's definitely fun. Yeah. Just traveling these days is kind of a pain. It is. Yeah. Very true. Yeah. Have you done Nepal? And, and... No, not yet. That is big on my list. Have you been? No. Oh, well, yeah. I really want to go. I'm always interested in, in the, you know. I'm not climbing the mountain. And, uh, it'd be cool, though. It'd be cool to see. I'm going to go see some monks up in Nepal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Do some climbing, yeah. hiking. I don't know about those two parts, but, you know, walk around, see some shit. Okay. okay. <laughs> Okay. Not really much to see. You're gonna be hiking regardless. Huh? Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> it ain't. It ain't your. It ain't. Your <laughs> that ain't my area, speed. For sure. Not your speed. Unless it involves a motor. Like, don't they do a rally race up there? They do. That thing's gnarly. That I would try. Would you? I've already sent the so truck like off. Like he said, that's like terrifying. I've already sent the truck off a thousand foot cliff. How and much worse the, can it get? Yeah, you're in Nepal, bro. A lot worse, <laughs> like yeah. ten thousand feet. <laughs> well, drive straight, you'll be fine. I did do a rally race. It was like we drove seven countries in Europe in seven days or something like that. That sounds like fun. And it was it would be so your speed. I did not like, it. <laughs> but it would be your speed for sure. Like it was because it was like 
driving everybody's driving the guys are driving so fast and then was you it saw was it that was that similar it's something similar. yeah it has like a similar name to it. it was years ago and it was like then they party at night then they drive and they party yeah. and like i don't party so i was like nauseous in the car just like i hate this yeah <laughs> yeah i don't drink so for me i'm like yeah all right you guys have fun i'll go to sleep yeah that's how i am i don't drink really either so it's like i'd rather be in bed <laughs> or in nature where's the most desolate place you've been to or hard to get to I feel like all the really pretty places are really hard to get to actually yeah. like it's like the places that like the travel days are just like 30 hours or more that's how patagonia was it's so difficult to get to i actually made this like TikTok of my like, where is patagonia for the people listening? oh yeah patagonia is in chile and argentina so it's mm -hmm. very very south um the tip is like the closest thing to antarctica yeah so it's beautiful it's amazing and there's so many beautiful climbs but it's so hard to get to and it's really massive so all the spots you want to hit are like so spread out so you've got it it's the days you're like five hours in the car and then you have to like hike 13 miles to see this view you know <laughs> how small of a population type of like how densely populated is it when you get down there that far away it's like oh nobody's there like, there's no, no there. nothing yeah you fly into a city kind of deal and you, yeah like... you fly into santiago chile and then from there you would you could take another small little plane to punta something and then you take a four-hour car wow Oof. that's a hike What's yeah they like down there it, it's cold it's, it's cold, cold. Huh? yeah and i kind of like cold climates i yeah. don't know why like it, it depends on where you're at but i do like cold does climate. it get like dark it's dark more of the time during the year it has that type of split too because you're so far south does it have that uh no that's more like awesome. iceland and greenland yeah. but no i think because they're more i don't know I, but it was full when we went in august mm -hmm. it, we had full days nice but i think you're right in the winter they don't it's the winter there right in august yeah it's opposite it's the opposite mm -hmm. have you done the hotel that's all ice where I don't remember. I saw it on Discovery Channel once. Oh, okay. Okay. No, uh, I don't think so. It's probably in like, uh, even Greenland like the, or maybe up in Sweden. I've... Lapland? I want to say Greenland. I'm leaning more. Greenland is ice and Iceland is green, right? Correct. Greenland's all ice. Yeah. I don't think and it's like, really the, like, it's you a... take like boats, but you don't really stay on land. Like it's not inhabit it's inhabitable. Not inhabitable right? Yeah. It's like Arctic, like yeah, it's Arctic, yeah, wow. yeah, and even the beds are made out Sweden, of ice, right? Yeah, that's what I figured. It's a little bit more habitable. I love Sweden. I've never been. Cool. You like it up there? Yeah, the people are really great. Like as far as like, yeah, community and country, and like it's very like everybody cares about everyone. is so sweet. There's no homeless. Like it's really like that middle class. Like I think that a lot of people strive for and want, like yeah. where everybody's equal. So it's just a cool place. I read the a cool conspiracy the other day about Finland not existing. Have you ever been to Finland? Yeah. You have? Yeah. But it does exist. It does exist. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I heard that it was just a Japanese fishing spot. There was some conspiracy theory. Oh, about that. okay. And okay. They said that the the country of Finland isn't really a. a Maybe it's not Finland. I got to look at a map. But uh, they said that it, it doesn't really exist, and it's just a big lake where the Japanese like to fish. It was an interesting uh uh you didn't dm it to me so i don't know yeah that wouldn't be yeah i never believe not in speed. conspiracy theories never no never so what's your experience traveling as an american um with blonde hair as a young girl uh, attractive traveling to these far off destinations what's your like experience with locals i'm sure you've had good and bad but like yeah how does that feel is it scary is it nerve-wracking not knowing the language a lot of times yeah no i think genuinely like a lot of people are always like weren't you scared to go there even when i say i'm gonna go to kazakhstan and things like this but like i've been to so many deep parts of the middle east and um so many destinations that a lot of my my family's like are you safe are you good and genuinely there's only two places i didn't really feel safe ever and they're not the places you would think like really? i think if you are very respectful of their culture like if i'm in the middle east like I wear a hijab. I'm covered. I'm making sure that I, I'm respectful. I think they look they they look a lot just because you have blonde hair and you look different or light eyes. And so even through the hijab, they'll like see your fair skin and they'll like look. But I never have felt un unsafe. Like even me being crazy and doing the wild things. Like the times I felt unsafe were ra randomly in the Bahamas when you're off the beaten path in the Bahamas. They're yeah. very very aggressive and um, Egypt and Egypt and that was just like yeah they because of this uh, no th it, i think it was different like they just even on the streets of egypt they're just like it's aggressive it's aggressive it's a very culture. i wouldn't have thought that 
Like Bahamas, I'm not surprised, but Egypt, I'm a little surprised on. Yeah, maybe it was just my, yeah, my experience, but they just weren't. I hear that about like the markets and everything. They're just, it's a lot. It's an intense big city, right? Yeah. But I think if you, if you're respectful of the culture and you're really familiar about where you're at, like other than petty theft, I think you're going to be fine. I think so many people are so afraid, but yeah, yeah. Probably worse than LA. I was staying, I stayed in hostels at $5 a night, sleeping in like a tube with no shower. And I wasn't thinking at 19, like I'm going to get kidnapped and I was always fine. So <laughs> that's cool. Traveling the world like you have. Do you ever see yourself leaving the U.S. and just living out of the country? No, I actually I'm a country girl at heart, so I want a ranch and I want I love I love the American dream. To be honest, like I like I want my kids to grow up with land and farm. Like I don't Where are you know. From? I'm from Central California, oh, but I grew up with horses sure. and yeah and all of that. So very Central California is so different yeah, yeah. than oh yeah than SoCal. But yeah, I just love I I think America has amazing opportunities and has a lot of my value so i don't know i mean I, I speak spanish now i lived in puerto rico for two years so i have tried living other places i think i could try it but i yeah i really there's something about where you're from being able to relate to people and connect on certain levels so favorite continent to travel in oh asia asia yeah it's a lot there huh there's a lot there it's all very different yeah yeah, I would say Asia. I mean, Europe is like, it's amazing and you can spend the most amount of time there. And like the older I, I get and the more I just want to like chill and have great food and like your priorities change rather than like go, go, go. Now you just want to like have good pasta or whatever. Then it's like Europe's amazing. You go to Italy, you could go to the south of France, like all those things. But if you want, so it depends on the time of your life. Like anytime somebody asks me, where should I travel? Where should I go? I'm like immediately like, what are your interests? Where are you at in your life? Like, are you a beach person or are you this person? Because I can tell you right away, like, what's going to work. But I think everybody, or like when I have my future kids, like if they come to me and they're like, hey, like, should I go to college? I'm going to be like, that's totally up to you. You know, I think college, all I did was party in college. I don't know, you know, <laughs> but. We get that a lot from our guests. Yeah. Yeah. Say, you know, some say it's still useful. For some I'd say the majority they'll they stay otherwise. It's a waste of time. Yeah. yeah. I would it's rather like they... my kids like, go and like backpack the world and experience different cultures and figure out who they are before deciding oh i'm gonna be like for me like going, i want to be a nurse like and then One of my biggest regrets as a young as a young man um in my 18 to 25s that i didn't like travel just go just be go. free and not have to worry about nice accommodations or yeah where I'm yeah end up the next day or yeah. to kind of go with the flow and just travel around the world and experience because that's how i felt with southeast asia it's like so inexpensive and you could live on 10 bucks a day like if you're good like you have a four dollar night hostel then you got six bucks for foods and now we could never do that you know like we're just in a different place in our life where we need comfort and those things i was just happy to be in the middle seat of the plane flying 30 hours to southeast asia sleeping with a hostel with 40 other people being like hey guys like you're just so thankful to be there that like and then i went back to some of those locations that i had went in my tw when i was 1920 that were like life-changing to me and i went back i was like oh whoa um <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is what I thought it was, you know, like me and my best friend were like, we're, our ashes are going to be in, in Sri Lanka and Thailand and all these places. And then we go back, we're like, okay, we did that check off the list. And thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> so I think everybody who's really young, like go do it, go be free because genuinely your mindset will change and you can never go back and do those things. Yeah. There's no chance you're paying me to take a middle seat 30 hours. Yeah. But when you're young, right? You're Who like, cares? heck yeah. I'm like, I'm small. My back is fine. <laughs> Uh, you've been to China? Mm hmm How was that? China was good. I Yeah, I think I didn't go to the best parts, maybe. Did you go to Great Wall and do all that stuff? No, not the Great Wall. Oh, okay. Yeah. I need to go back. I, there's some really cool spots uh -huh. in China that I want to hit. Yeah, very that, adventurous, I hear, when you get outside of, like, the, the industrial. City part, yeah. So I'm like, I would love to show. Now I'm, like, really trying to find unique, more unique spots because you kind of run out of stuff. Yeah, how does that, how does that work as an influencer? And then you build a following and you go all these places and, and then... Do you ever get stagnant? Like, how do you keep it creative? I'm sure people suggest and ask, ask you to come places, but what do you do to keep to keep the spark alive? Oh, it's tough, you know, and I think every, there's always a new platform, which is tough, and it's a rat race. It's like crazy. If you film a movie, you know, you're on set for a year, like, and then you produce this movie, and it's amazing. Everybody loves it. Like, with social media, it's like, 
we post on five platforms every single day, you know? So it's like, you could stand on top of that plane, no parachute, and the next day people are like, all right, what's next? And so it's definitely, I know a lot of creators who also struggle with it, but it's just this constant pull of like needing to provide and and it not being enough and keep going and going and going. And yeah, it's, it's a weird place to be in, but yeah, I think you just have to be like, take it day by day and keep trying to create and keep trying to come up with like that's why i really respect creators a lot of people are like this isn't a career and, and it really depends but the person that can sit there every single day come up with new ideas every single day it's and not easy. push past all the judgment that you face and get on camera every single day even when you're not feeling it yeah. even when you're you know and like in the beginning of building your your following it's no guarantee you know it's like building a business like you both have it's like it's scary nobody at the end is saying like you're gonna sell your company you just have to understand that like nope. i'm not getting a paycheck right now but i hope like i have to believe in myself enough like i feel like all entrepreneurs or creators are a little bit delusional because yeah. you have to be so we are. we are stupid delusional to believe in yourself that like you're fighting all this and i feel like the bigger creator that i've become i'm actually more in my head than when I was when I was building back then. I was like, oh yeah, do it, get create content. Who cares what everybody thinks? And now I'm so much more in my head about like, is this what people want or is this what I'm doing? It's such a- Sex brings self-doubt, yeah. Oh, that's- So they say ignorance is bliss. Yep. You just kind of, I'm gonna do this because I like to do it. And yeah. You get, you get a little success and you're like, and you have other opinions and you know, you have something to- Can you listen to some of the ghost people? around the track kind of thing, right? Yeah it's crazy i hear mr beast talk about that a lot like that he gets hella drained from like like what's next you know mm -hmm. he's like oh, okay i gave away this and now i gotta find another thing to like because they always want they just he's, want more. he always wants to one up himself <laughs> yeah and, and you can't like thing. it's also like you the set following it, and on all the competitors and things that are just nipping at his heels type of deal you know it's like yeah it's it can be very trying or the different level of expectation you put on yourself you know especially for um a lot of creators who can relate to this it's like we are very driven people you have to be very driven to make it in this um crazy world of posting every single day but it's like when your precedent that you had previously set was i get five hundred thousand likes on a photo you know so now if that precedent changes you're never going to be able to like live so it's that constant chase of like well okay i've fallen off or what's going on or this it can be so mentally taxing oh and then certain brand deals are like oh that post isn't doing as well as we thought and... yeah or like and you, you never know what's going to perform and what's not and the algorithms shift and they change and there was times in TikTok where every video i posted was going to get a million two million views and now it doesn't you know and so it's like you just have to be like okay I, that's not going to change me creating but you have to understand algorithms change they push different creators it's and you have to you're chasing the rat race of what they want What's oh, yeah. uh, your favorite platform? It changes all the time, I think. Um, the cool thing about social media is at least if you build a following across different platforms is everyone will pay differently at different times. So you can, you know, have different streams of income. Right now, Snapchat pays really well, which is great. Um, I like creating on TikTok because I feel it's pressure. Like you kind of just post whatever and it's like, you don't feel like the eyes versus Instagram is like, very professional and curated and like you yeah. a lot of people are gonna see it so even though on tiktok a lot of people see it too but for some reason i'm like oh um, that's the one i'm wearing no makeup and throw up whatever and i not really think and then they do well but facebook is also randomly great sometimes Her facebook is still the most i just read that it's the most used platform worldwide no it'll be wild like it'll be wild and that's what's cool about content too is a lot of people don't view it in this way but it is an asset like an asset that you've created now that you can reutilize at any point oh, so purpose yeah repurpose forever so i have six years of content so i'll be reposting on facebook all the time there's one video of me and my family playing like christmas games because we do like really competitive christmas games and it was three years old and and my editor reposted on facebook got 200 million views wow <laughs> we're like okay that's not with my brand at all like it underperformed on every other platform and then just popped off and people are like my family's getting tagged in every direction they're like what do we do kinsey we know like what everybody's tagging us and i'm like it was just crazy because you never know so even with instagram now that the life hack of instagram is i hate telling people this because they're gonna start using it but uploading the for you page and not to your page do you guys do that what are no. you talking about? You can upload to the For You page? Yeah. Okay. This is my life hack, but... <laughs> Even Jay's... <Everybody> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. 
<laughs> this is gonna be the clip that goes viral and it's gonna shoot me in the foot because now I'm finally <laughs> hitting the for you page on Instagram right now. My Instagram had no growth for the last two years. It was yeah. so I was stagnant. Your, and then your personal. Yeah. My personal. I'm probably the same. Me too. It was tough. And then now, because they have Instagram reels, um, I'll be posting content that I filmed on TikTok years ago, but I don't want to flood my followers. They're going to be like, I'm so over this. I want to unfollow me. Yeah. So you, there's an option now to only post to the For You page. Uh, so it goes to the Reels page and videos okay. will hit 9 million views. 10, like, you just, and it's, our, you just got our show to do better. Thank you. Yeah. The look on Jay's face right now is priceless. <laughs> <laughs> I, I could teach you, but you got to sign an NDA. <laughs> <laughs> He'll sign it. He'll sign it right now. That's cool. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. We appreciate you giving up some, some game. So yeah, so that's, a, that's great because I could be posting every single day on Instagram without. And you're not directing it directly to them. If they're going to find it on their for you page, they're going to they find it. And it's going to find new And it's people. a new audience. Like it will literally be but 10 million new audience and none of your own followers. Does it That's live great. on your page as well or no? You could not make that decision. Like I, I, I could show you guys after, yeah. but like I'll post it, which also is weird for brands because brands will go to my page and be like, okay, all of your other views got a million or whatever. And this video has 5,000 views. Why? Like, do you have fake followers? What's going on? And I'm like, because I'll be posting every single day. A lot of them are going to get 5,000 views, 10,000 views, 20,000 views. And then randomly one left hooks, even like after like leaving it for three weeks is going to pop off to a couple million views. And you're like, oh, that's how it's been on YouTube. So you got to leave them. And so if you go to my page, though, like if you go to the reels, so they don't live on my page. But if you go to reels, you'll see like random videos. that have like lower views yeah. that were posted to the for you page. And then I wait a couple weeks. And if they don't hit, I archive them. Gotcha. No, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So that's, I mean, my girlfriend, she and her um, boyfriend, like, really started a brand together and, like, a couple's brand. And they've grown, like, 200K in the last, like, month just doing that. Wow. Mm hmm That's wild. So it's a great opportunity. So it's fun when there's opportunity for growth. Like, I, it depends on what plot. Like, that, I, that's why I like Instagram the most yeah, right now. Because yeah, yeah. you want to grow. Like, TikTok in the beginning was, like, I was crushing, you know? Like, it, when it, in 2020... That was nothing I was going to do. So I made three TikToks a day. I was crushing it three a day, uploading every single day until that year I built to three million and I've been stacking at three million. So how do you handle posting on that? Like I get flustered even posting on two or three platforms, three, four times a week. How do you like manage posting that much every day and being so excited about it? Oh yeah, that's tough. That's what I'm saying. It's a business, you know, and I've always been an entrepreneur and that's always been my mindset. So it's like, I run this like a machine, you know, it's mm -hmm. like we have Monday meetings. I have my assistant, I have my VA, I have like my management. We have Monday meetings. What are we creating this week? What is being posted? What platforms, you know what I mean? So that when I go into a collab, like I really try and collab a lot. And so it's like, if I go into, um, and we're going to film something together, you better bet. I go in with knowing we got five TikToks. This is five Instagram reels. We're going to get a hundred Snapchats today. We're going to get, you know, and that's the way you have to, but I have people, I, I have a team that helps, you know, that yeah. can be like, Hey, I'll have my assistant be like taking snaps the whole day so that we are pushing out that or pushing out that um, or repurposing a lot of content. But yeah, it's a lot to manage. Or there'll be times I'm like traveling that I'm like, oh man, I was so focused on YouTube. I forgot to think about like turning the camera and like, cause it's like you, if you film this way, you can't film this way. And then you miss that shot for the other platform. He yells at me all the time. Yeah. <laughs> cause I'll do a real format and be like, hey, that company wants a YouTube. What do you want me to do with fucking this image? You know, you can't. No, my, that's my editor does the exact same thing. He's like, when are you going to turn your for YouTube? And I'm like, it's so hard when every other platform is this way. It's just YouTube. You have to think about that way. Wow. And if you're doing real or YouTube shorts, it's this way. Mm -hmm. But the long form is, is all it is turned. Is, yeah. I haven't seen anything with YouTube shorts. I upload all my videos, YouTube shorts. I never, they never hit. Really? We had one from the show that was... Uh... No, we've now had like a dozen. Really? Yeah. That have hit well? We've had, we had our first one that went big was what? What is it at? Like 17 million, 15 million? 15, 17, 15, somewhere around there. And it was a guy, a gentleman that he met on an airplane. Yeah, walking off first class. That has a, shit. a pest control business and uh, we have him come on and, and it's a video about how his, he had a family business and his parents kind of stole the business from him. And so it was just him like about, yeah, my parents kind of whatever. And the clip was like that his parents stole a $5 million business from him. And then like three weeks into it being up there, it just like hit the algorithm and, and just, just took like, off. 
crazy. You just never know. Yeah, if it hits, it hits. Or how, you know? Yeah. Like some of Mickey stuff started to take off, but you could tell YouTube throttled it back. Yeah. Down. It's yeah. interesting the way they do that. YouTube's tough. I yeah. think that's why, like, in the beginning of my career, like, I was a lot more of an edgy creator, like, you know, climbing the pyramid, all those things. So I think I. What did you start? They stopped on? favoring me. On YouTube or Instagram? Um, Instagram and YouTube, yeah. yeah. But yeah, Instagram is my biggest. Okay. For sure. Are you still doing long form on YouTube these days? I do, but my views are so bad that it's tough, you know? To, like, focus on that? Yeah. Yeah. We're doing a new series that we're planning out, which is going to be very, like, planned out and organized which i'm excited about and then on i'll the be on the same channel or new channel on the same channel i mean I, I i would consider doing a new channel only because i'm like i wonder if mine is demonetized and affected you know so i left my main channel we used to have the show on there and then we flipped everything to a completely new show and it changed everything <gasps> so just tip keep just, both yeah. yeah wow that's a really good idea it seems like it's ever evolving and ever changing and they're kind of and it's and it's you know, the thing that bothers me the most is, is like, how about you just show my content to the people that actively are looking for me? Dude. Like Instagram, it's mm -hmm. like, when you're looking at a story view or whatever it is in the algorithm and you're like, like, what's up, bro? Why don't you just show it to like half of my followers at least? Cause these people actually want to, to see, see it. stuff. Right? I know, Instagram engagement, it's just. And it's like, oh, 5%. So 5 different. Oh, I went from like Some hundreds of thousands on stories to like five, yeah, 2K. Yeah, I'm like, and it's a little discouraging because it's like you've, it does you know, get discouraging for sure. I think like it, well, even likes. Yeah, it was like so. I always got five hundred thousand likes photo. Now it's like eighty thousand, yeah. and I know that's like still great. But I'm like, whoa, yeah, like just not showing it to people. No, which is weird. Yeah, and I feel like they cherry pick, or if you post with someone they don't like, then you get penalized without even knowing it. Yeah, and then like if you get certain engagement from certain people, then it like it like changes that obviously because i see it boost back up and stuff as well it is weird it is it doesn't make a lot of sense but that's why you're in this rat race it's definitely a tough career you're always in a rat race but it's like a business like you have to just keep pressing like you said earlier that's why you run yours like a business you're posting five ten times a day on different platforms like yeah some days fucking suck and you didn't get the views you wanted but yeah. then tomorrow everything hits and it makes up for yesterday yeah but then it's like that, that then i think the mental health aspect comes in where that's just like an unrealistic emotional roller coaster that you sign up for yeah but i guess it's probably like the same with any business you know most people go to a job and they get their paycheck every single day not much changes but when you're running a business and it's costing you money it's costing you money and sales are down or whatever your business is because i have businesses as well it's like it's so crazy you can have the craziest sales day then you can have a day that's so bad and then you have a day for social media where it hits and then it doesn't hit and it's just like that most it's... people don't realize in your space, you have your VA, you have your editors, mm -hmm. you have your assistant, you have your manager. Everybody's getting paid whether you made money that day or not. Yeah. Oh, oh, 100%. They, they're on payroll. Mm -hmm. Like, so if we have a bad month or whatever, like... You're on the okay. whole 10, 20K, like... You had a bad month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you had a bad month. Everybody else has... Well, not my manager, because she only gets paid when I get paid, yeah, which is but great, but everybody right. else is on payroll. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're getting paid. I mean, if they have too too many too many bad months that they don't do their job, I guess they stop getting paid as well, right? Think yeah, no. Them, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. no, definitely. Just, and they work so they hard. Work my my VA, actually, who is, I, like, literally love him so much. I could, I wish I could hug him, but he's in India. He, <laughs> he's the one who discovered the For You page thing. Like, oh, he really? will actively, like, he is so passionate about this job, and he's been with me for years. Yeah. Like, he will genuinely come to me, and he's like, he came to me today, and he was like, I was thinking, this is why this is happening. Like, he'll go out of his way to research why something is happening and discover new things. And he's like, can we have a team meeting tomorrow? And I'm like, I can only do 12. It's like 3 in the morning for him. He's like, okay, I'll be there. Well, Damn. That's I'm cool. like, we don't have the same work ethic in, in the States, huh? No, I just hired a new editor and she's like, I'm going to work from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. your time. I'm like, I won't be up, but you can text me around like 930 my time and I'll be awake. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just discuss stuff in the afternoon and here's your list of stuff I need. Here's your access to everything and yeah, exactly. work your magic. Exactly. Um, being a creator is obviously, I think, probably the tip top of every kid's list at this moment yeah it's this, yeah that's probably even more than an athlete and you know this is like growing up i wanted to be michael jordan but now i think people want to be creators yeah 
Um, is there any advice that you could share with young people out there, male or female, um, getting into the space? Yeah, it, yeah, if you wanna be a creator, I think this is with anything in life, what you need to do 100% is you don't need, the cool thing is you can be anybody. You know, I think a lot of people are like, oh, if you're attractive or you're this or you're that, like now with TikTok, it's like, you, they, you need to be relatable, honestly. Like they like more relatable. So whatever it is for you, first off, figure out what's you. What's something you enjoy doing every single day? It could be cooking, it can be cars, it could be adventure, like whatever that is for you, beauty, stick to that. Don't try and be anybody that you're not because that's gonna fall through the cracks after a little while and just be consistent. Post two times a day for a year or more before you give up. You know, like you need to like- That's what people don't realize. It's so, you. it's insane. It could be years of grinding. And I remember this YouTuber I knew, he had 10 million on YouTube, was crushing it. And when he told this story, I was like, I wish more people knew this, you know? It was like, I had posted a hundred YouTube videos, a hundred that got five views, five. It's not like like 10 views, five views, three, th 300. videos is a lot of work on long form. 300, like 300 views. You know how hard that is on your like, like, I don't know, you just give up. You're like, nobody wants to see it. It's like hard on your mental because you just feel like you don't believe in yourself anymore. And then now he has 10 million on YouTube. After a hundred videos, it hit and never went down. So it was like- People went back to all those old videos and found all the gold he had left for them. All the gold. And so yeah. it's like being a creator, like being an entrepreneur, it's a hard, hard job of a lot of thankless hours and, and free hours you're gonna put in to build something big. So don't quit your job. Don't be like, I'm gonna quit my job and go be a creator. Like, no, be like, you know what? I'm gonna carve out an extra an hour or two a day and I'm gonna be posting every single day for a year and I'm not gonna miss a day and I'm gonna hold myself accountable and see how it goes. And I promise if you have your own niche and your own thing or you're just vulnerable with the camera or you talk to the camera every day, people love that on TikTok. Honestly, better than more formulated curated videos like yeah. talk to the camera about what you're going through like a lot of mom bloggers are popping up they're just talking about like the struggles they go through and people relate to that just be you and post every day yeah it really is a beautiful time to have access to um one everybody's capable of having this supercomputer and being able to connect with the world and also uh being able to get into anybody's inbox or anybody's, uh, uh, you know, comment and be social on social media to build yeah. a following. It's a, it is a special time to connect people. Oh yeah. Oh, a lot yeah. of hate as well, but you know, we're getting yeah. the balance yeah. of both, you know? Yeah. But I also think it's kind of a toxic environment as well, just because everybody now wants to be a creator. Everybody wants to live this life. And so everybody wants to quit their job and not live a normal life. And it, it does have its downfalls, you know? And I think, Talk about that a little bit. I just feel like we've less of left a society where people want to like work and contribute to society. Now it's like everybody just assumes the influencer life is like you don't work and you get to live work like and have make a lot of money and do all those things. And that's not the case. So I think it's just like this false reality that people mm -hmm. all of a sudden are unhappy with their own life because they see this other option out there and they don't realize what's behind it. And so that's such a toxic place because then they quit their job and they're like, I want to go do this. And then it's tough, you know? And so I say this all the time though, social media isn't real life. Mm -hmm. Look at how much stuff you stage on, you know, whatever content, whatever it might be, you're not going to show like your personal, personal stuff. Like there's just certain parts you leave out. Yeah. And a lot of people who meet me say that they're like, Oh, I've... you're a lot different in person. And I'm like, honestly, it's, it's so messed up. And I love my audience and I wish I was more personal with you guys, but they don't, they don't know who I'm dating. They don't know what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. Even like people that I'll see now, they're like, because I don't post where I'm at when I'm there. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they're like, wait, you're not in like, you know, Argentina right now. I'm like, oh, but I'm currently posting my stories like I'm there, you know? So I'm like, it is so, yeah. yeah that's dangerous for you at this point. Oh yeah, I got robbed one time and I was really done with that. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. That's actually having was that a conversation. posting uh, something being somewhere? Yeah, I was in Peru and they had no, it was like more of an inside job, but they all, they hadn't followed me and they knew that I was in Peru um, and that we'd be gone and then figured out where I lived and everything. And oh, wow. Well, yeah. yeah. I was having this conversation with models yesterday and they're like, well, how do I be more protected? I'm like, well, think yeah. about what you post. Before. Think about what you post. And like Tim Kennedy said it best this weekend. You like coffee every morning, have five different coffee shops you go to and rotate and not in the same pattern. So, you know, you have that coffee, 
but hey, instead of having it on Tuesday, you have it on Thursdays, just so no one knows your pattern because mixing yeah, it up. Yeah. You know, because it's not bad. Like I love when fans show up places and stuff. Like I, I, I know they just want to be supportive. Like if I'm staying at a hotel and they want a picture, or if like I, I had a workout studio, I would always go and I'm posting them. And then yeah, they they knew I was going to be there at seven a.m. every day, so they would show up. And it's like yeah, it gets to a point where it's like that's fine if it's a fan, but what if it's not? You know. Yeah. Have that. had a bad experience. No, no, no. Luckily, it's always just been really supportive people, and except for being robbed, I always see the best in the world, though. So, what about the mental health of being a creator that a lot of people don't realize? Oh God, that's a really relevant topic for me right now, only because. Yeah, I, I do real estate as well, so I own a lot of real estate. That's like a big passion of mine, um, investing into real estate, and. This past year, I took a big break from social media and I was just focused on building my, my, you know, real estate so that I can have wealth for my family and things like that. And I was like, I wanted, cause I've always been so driven and you, you don't really get the respect of being a driven, driven woman when you're a creator. They're like, Hey, well, you're just hot and you post on the internet, you know? So it's like, I'm like, no, I'm a, I'm a boss and I'll show you. Like, I'm going to be, I'm going to have 10,000 units. And I'm going to achieve this and this. And so I took a break last year and really focused on real estate and building that. Um, and it came with its challenges, of course. But I also was like, I think a lot happier. And now I'm back to creating full time again. Um, and it's tough. It's so tough. The highs are high and the lows are low. Highs. And I think it's because of the validation and everything that you chase. And you're like, it's never going to be enough. And so it's so much to keep up with. Nobody could keep up with that. And so there's so much of me that's like, I just want to pump this machine where I can make my money and put into real estate and then make some babies and have a real life. Like, you know, because like, I just want a normal life. I want to live on a ranch. I want to have kids and I want a normal life. But then I'm like, well, I'm kind of, it's a, I've already been so pre like exposed and I don't know, I'm kind of fucked for life, I guess. No. But how do you mentally get that break or how do you reset? So you don't feel that. Um, I have really, really good friends in my life. And I also am in therapy. I think everybody should be in therapy. So um, therapy really, really helps. Or I just, yeah, I have really good conversations with my friends. System. Good. Yeah. And with my friends, I'm, I'm a normal person, you know, I'm not Kinsey on the internet cause that's affected me in dating as well. And I don't want to be seen for Kinsey on the internet. I want to be seen for me. So my friends in person will call me out on my shit. They'll be like, we, we don't, you know, care at all. So I think it's being surrounded by really, really good people, but I also haven't really figured it out. I feel like I'm not the happiest I've ever been now. So I'm on that journey. That the, my solution is to have kids and live on a ranch. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> no, but you've at least acknowledged it and you're finding the path to work through it. Yeah, definitely. You know How that. does it affect the dating scene? Is it like, do you have a lot of uh, like people think of you in a certain way or uh, have seen you and, and expect you to be this character type of deal? I'm sure it comes with everything, right? Yeah. Do you date people in the business or do no. you? No, 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 That's not really my type though, yeah. but it's more so like paradox of choice. Like this, if too much option is bad for us, like everybody needs, every human needs option. It makes us, builds our ego. It fills our like every day we can make a choice. That's a beautiful thing to make a choice. But when you walk into a store now and there's a million pasta sauces or whatever, you can't decide, so right? There's too much, too much option. And so I think that with like, DMs and, and dating apps and Raya and all these things like something about it just makes it feel like when you when you were young and you're living in a town and you find somebody amazing and they're great and you make it work you know like that's a beautiful thing like I think now we're put in this place of society where the, the Instagram and dating apps and like this paradox of choice where we're never going to settle because oh well Gary has this Pablo has this like oh well if you fuck up this way, then I have Charles over here. You know, it's like, yeah. there's too much options. And so I think that's affected me. And I also think, yeah, like I've been in situations where they're infatuated with the idea of me and not me. And then I'm set to the standard that I'll never live up to. And it doesn't matter how great I am. It's like, yeah. they see me as this untouchable, amazing thing. It's this chase. It's so exciting. She's, she's so amazing. And then you have, we have flaws. We're human. We're, and because they've already put me on this crazy pedestal, it's only down from there. Yeah. So that's scary. And I also don't want them to fall in love with Kinsey. I want them to fall in love with me. So my best friends always say, my husband's gonna be the guy that doesn't have social media, who like has no idea who I am. And then that would be great. <laughs> the good old boy that 
that walks into your life one day, hopefully, huh? Yeah, That's a good cool. guy. Yeah, and I there's there is great guys. I think maybe it's also my type. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. No, we wish you the best with that. You'll and find it. Time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'll be good. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. I was asking someone that the other day. How's dating these days? They're like, it's horrible. Because mm -hmm. social media has just made it different. It's different. Well, yeah, because you see, there's always, oh my God, this girl's so hot on here. There's hot on, and he talked about that, where he's talking about just yeah. the, the male um, the male virginity rate at, at age is like getting oh, really high. Uh, oh, Stefan. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so we had a guest on, and uh, he was a relationship expert, but he was talking about like, males losing their virginity and they say that it's not like the mid was but it's now into like the like mid 20s mid to late 20s and yeah. to a certain percentage it's almost like 30 percent of men um are virgins into like their late 20s and it's he said it's a lot to do with with uh access to access to you know only fans porn much. everything just too much too stimulation much stimulation basically mm -hmm. or like people aren't having real positive connections anymore or putting themselves out there in a situation to talk to people because they are well they're also afraid of consequence yeah. afraid to even have a conversation like how many you've been to a bajillion influencers events most of them don't know how to talk without the phone in front of them mm -hmm. and just have a real conversation which is change things yeah yeah totally it's a you've seen it yeah definitely well, yeah, it used to be a little bit different. Like Hollywood obviously isn't the same as, uh, it's changed so much. And even in Hollywood now, it's less about being an actor as it is like about, you know, can you build a following? Can they promote you? Can they uh, build yeah. an enterprise build around you? A business around you, which is more of the focal point of being a, you know, classically trained method actor or somebody that has other things, uh, comedian, these type of things, you know? Yeah. Different times. Yeah, it was funny when you were talking about the holiday content, though. I uh, I knew a few people that did, like, uh, Christmas-type commercials when they were kids, like, real young. One was a, my buddy Chris. He did a, it was a Hoover vacuum commercial. And uh, they ran it for, like, 25 years, every holiday season. And obviously, they pay you holding fees in between. But this kid literally made money for like 25, 30 years off of a commercial he did when he was like six because Hoover just kept running the vacuum commercial because it hit every holiday. They didn't even have to produce anything else. And so for that period of time, he knew that he was just getting residuals wow. from this one thing. So, yeah, you can repost, recycle. Companies do it all the time. They come yeah. back to things. Yeah. They bring back campaigns. So oh, for yeah. those out there. Don't feel, don't feel like you have to keep creating if you can yeah, repurpose. take it and repurpose it. That's what I love about the new For You page on Instagram. It's like all this content. Yeah. I can be posting every day on Instagram. And Yeah, I mean, for me even, that's like cool to be able to go back there and not know that you're like, it's not all sitting on your page like you're doing. I keep my page pretty Because I like to clear stuff uh, off of my of page. Off. Right. You, that, that, it's, it's your resume now, yeah. you know? Like it's so important, your feed of your Instagram. Like you can't just be flooding the feed. Yeah. Nope. But the for you, I would love to flood. Flood it. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. Have Nobody fun else that. do that though. Just, just you guys. So you were talking about the new show. Can you speak on it at all, or is it still in the works? Or oh, my new series. I'm actually so a lot. I have a new sports management. I do a lot of sports. So um, there's so much opportunity in the sports space. Yeah. Um. So we're doing um a big new show. It's like a day in the life, and it will be a day in the life following the biggest um athletes in each sports department and then we'll like compete in something athletic but also get to do like one-on-one -on -one interviews with like you know whether it's jimmy butler or cody ballinger and just being able to like what is it in life of the an mlb player you know what do you do every single day what is your training regimen and then like um getting to also compete in a physical task with them make it like kind of fun in competition but also get the sit down interview that's awesome. That'll be fun. Yeah. That'll definitely be a lot of fun. Yeah. And I'm excited for that. It will be something new for me, a new challenge. And do they have to come to you or are you traveling to them? I travel to them. Yeah. yeah. Sure. They have a pretty tight schedule these days. Yeah, so exactly. Pretty, so that's cool, though. You'll get to do some cool stuff, meet some cool people. Meet some cool stuff. people and film a lot. Of, yeah. The sports and content does like really well right now. The, the top of the game, huh? Yeah. And travel even more. And get, yeah, I get to do a lot more interview stuff, which is great. And it's good. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. It's something you can do forever as well. Right. It could like parlay into the future, yeah. like into hosting. And I love that stuff. So yeah. it's like, even if I'm not done with social media, I would love to do hosting or do sports, it's whatever, commentary yeah. and things like that. Yeah. I could see that being very, um, being successful at that. Oh yeah. yeah. 
I couldn't do it. I'd freeze up too much. Oh, really? I love that. I love being like on on the spot and like a second camera turns on, I'm like, can go. Let's do We'll see you at the ESPYs uh, after sports show. Exactly. You know? That will be the goal. <laughs> You'll get there. Yeah, but then it's wild because, yeah, and then you get in your head. You're like, oh, my, my brand is adventure. And my manager's like, we really got to go sports. You know, it's time to transition. And I'm like, does my audience want that? Like, you start getting in your head. You know, I'm yeah. like, who cares? I've been just, doing this for years. Just like, run it. Just run it and just commit and do it. And the only person stopping me right now is me. That's it. Have fun and enjoy yourself and, you know, keep creating for the people out there. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep pushing. <laughs> keep pushing along. Um. Anything else? Uh, I guess, can we get to like where people can find you? Uh, all of your socials and handles and things like that. We'll put yeah, another thing. Definitely. Well, you guys can find me at Kinsey, K-I-N-S-E-Y on Instagram. And then Kinsey Walensky on TikTok. Um, Kinsey on YouTube. Facebook is this is Kinsey Walensky probably, I think. And then Snapchat is the same, Kinsey Walensky. So I'm on every platform. You will find me. <laughs> um, your usual question at the end yeah um just something that you would like to leave the listeners and viewers with um could be motivational could just be something you want to share it's up to you um i think everybody believe in yourself and whatever you want to do i think when i was younger i got judged a lot for changing careers and bouncing around and you're doing this and you're doing that and because it was so normal just to go to school and get a job and so i want people if you have an idea or you want to do something like Try everything. Figure out what's for you. Stop caring what people think and just go do it until you find what makes you happy. That's it. Key to right there. Couldn't Simple and sweet. That. <laughs> um, yeah, do you have anything else that, that you want to no. get to question-wise or anything? I think we covered. Okay. All right. Well, we appreciate your time. Thank you for yeah. coming out. Thank you for having me, guys. It was really great chatting with you. Like, comment, subscribe. See you guys on the next one.